So I had mentioned in an earlier video that the Jeep here was having trouble kind of getting started. It's got a decent amount of top end, but if there's any type of incline, it doesn't want to get started, it doesn't want to move. It's running just a standard centrifugal clutch. And I'm running the biggest axle sprocket that I can for this size tire. And as you can see, it's already touching the ground. So I can't go any bigger on the axle sprocket. And this is the smallest clutch uh, and sprocket combination I could find. So this is the 11 tooth clutch and we've got a 78 tooth axle sprocket. I was hoping it was gonna be enough, but it's just not enough to get this thing moving. So, you know, some might say, well, why not add a torque converter? There's just not enough room with the way I built this frame to add a torque converter. And I really wanted to keep this Jeep the size that it is. So I didn't wanna to have to cut the body like a lot of people do. I wanted it to stay small and I just couldn't get the large torque converters to fit it. So I might in the future work on a kind of custom setup so I can get a little more torque out of this thing. But for now, I want to just get it to where I can hop in it, press the gas and it start moving without me having to rock it forward or push it off with my feet. So what we're gonna to do today is I'm going to change out the spring and the clutch there. So with the factory spring and the clutch, the clutch engages at around 2300 RPMs or, or a little lower. So I bought this green spring here. It'll let the clutch engage at around 2500 RPM, which is closer to the RPM that this engine produces max torque at. So hopefully just adding the spring, bumping up the engagement by a couple hundred RPM will help this engine get this Jeep moving here. You can actually modify the factory spring. You can take the spring out, cut a couple links out of it, connect it back together, but you also have to take the shoes out and cut at least two of them in half. And the reason for doing that is that you need to reduce the size of those shoes. And just by cutting them in half, you're taking out the amount of material that is equal to the width of the blade you're using to cut it. And if you watch any of Max Torx videos, that's what they suggest doing because otherwise you won't be able to get that factory spring back in because it'll just be too short compared to the size of the groove in the shoes. Now, I could have done that and usually that's how I do things. I like to do things on my own and save as much money as possible, but I don't have a saw that is set up to cut that. And by the time I bought a saw and spent all that time doing it and you know potentially doing it and not work it just wasn't worth it it wasn't worth the time the effort when i can buy a pre-made spring that doesn't require me to cut anything that i can pop in in just a couple minutes and you know the spring was 15 bucks so that's well worth the lack of hassle and time required to modify this on my own so we'll get the clutch off and we'll get this new spring on and they sell all kinds of springs for these things that engage at different rpms so they have quite a selection okay got the clutch off now we got to take it apart and if you can see there's a, a snap ring right there we're gonna take that ring off and we'll be able to slide the drum off. Okay, snap rings off and as you can see, you can just pull the drum right off. So now that the drum's off, we can take this larger snap ring down in here off, and then we'll be able to get to the factory spring and the shoes here.
all right and that's not the right way to do it but it was pinned down under the edge here so now that that snap rings off we can start taking apart the rest of it here okay so we've got our top plate off and as you can see here we've got all of our weights and then we got our spring so we'll take the factor spring out get this one in Okay, factory springs off. And now we need to take our green spring here and connect the, connect the loops there. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I've pretty much got it in its groove. We'll put the top plate back on. There we go. I still see that this spring is still seated in all the shoes. We gotta put some weight on it and try to get that, that clip back on. Okay, we're having to use a little bit of ingenuity here since I it's only me. Okay, got that snap ring started. There we go. We got the snap ring in. All right, so now we can assemble the rest of it. It's got this little bushing that goes down there before we put the drum back on. Drum's back on, and now we'll put the little bitty snap ring that holds the drum back on, on there. All right, there we go. Let's get it back on there and see if it does what we want it to. so as you can see it didn't make a little bit of difference it did get moving a little quicker on its own but it's still not really where i want it to be at i'm still struggling a little bit on inclines so at some point i am going to have to try to make a custom torque converter or you know kind of mess around with some jack shafts um, to kind of customize the gear ratio to get a little more torque uh, top end it's it's pretty good it just needs a little bit on the the bottom so it's more enjoyable.